Now, uh, we have already on my channel, we have already gone through the complaint in detail. If you miss that, if you miss that, go back and catch that. We went through the whole thing. We went line by line through almost the entire thing, just skipping some basic procedure and other stuff like that. But we went through the entire CoffeeZilla lawsuit and broke it down. But now we get, now we get CoffeeZilla responding. And what's interesting about this is that this can be used against CoffeeZilla. So here's where this gets legal. And this is where there's this intersection between online influencers and the law. So anything CoffeeZilla says here can be used against him in court. So if CoffeeZilla says anything that is incorrect, that is defamatory, that is something that Logan Paul can add to his lawsuit. So CoffeeZilla, in making this video, had to understand that, hey, if I come out here and say something, this could hurt me. This could hurt me. That's what this is very, very interesting. So we're going to listen to this in a, does any of this help CoffeeZilla? Does it hurt him? Also, I want to clarify some uh, legal aspects. Now, I have not watched this whole video, but when I watched like the first minute, which is all I've really seen, I just played the first minute, I, I heard CoffeeZilla make a misstatement of the law. So I will be correcting any misstatements of the law or clarifying or expanding on any other sort of things he says here that are not correct. And by the way, I, I don't really fault CoffeeZilla for that. He's not a lawyer, so sometimes he misses the nuance. That That's really oftentimes not his fault. He's probably kind of explaining what has been explained to him or he read somewhere or his lawyer explained to him, and he doesn't understand the, the whole context. That's fine. We're going to get it here on The Legal Mindset. Let's, uh, let's do this. So this is, once again, on CoffeeZilla's um, YouTube page. So this is him reacting and responding. So we're going to get a live react right here. Crypto Zoo only a year after he thanked me for it. Rather than let me, let me rewind Logan that. Paul is suing me for Crypto Zoo only a year after he thanked me for it. Publicly humiliate himself in court by accusing me of defaming him. He's hired five lawyers to sue me, which he hopes will stop me from exposing. This is the, uh, this is the this is the thing that always looks bad when you come with a bunch of lawyers that are pro hoc vicheing, which means they're out of state lawyers, and they're they're having to come into the state via this person, Shelby O'Brien, this, it, it always looks bad. Now, sometimes these can be specialists and sometimes they can be very, very accomplished lawyers, but oftentimes they don't know about the state law. And one thing that's very, very important here, very important here is this is a Texas lawsuit and Texas has anti-slap law right? If it applies the law of Texas and they apply the anti-slap law, that could be really bad. And their out-of-state lawyers might not be thinking about the strength of Texas anti-slap law. So this is very, very interesting, uh, very interesting here. You see, only hours before this lawsuit was filed, I had reached out to Logan Paul about a new investigation into one of his companies, which has just been accused by the Canadian government of being a multi-layered fraud in Canada. I obviously had questions. So, so that statement... He's pretty clean on that one about his uh, other company here uh, because the Canadian, all he was doing is saying the Canadian government is accusing them of this. They're investigating of this. So that statement right there by CoffeeZilla, not defamatory, not adding any defamatory, um, you know, ability for, for Logan to add this to the complaint. So coffee's in the clear on this one. I obviously had questions, but before I was able to get answers, Logan's team of lawyers showed up to silence me. We're going to talk about that. We're also going to go through this lawsuit. I'm going to tell you how to support us if you want, because while I didn't think I'd need help, I was wrong. But so it seems like he's I'm just watching this. It seems like he's already asking for money. Now I will say, um, Support creators at your own discretion. Before we get to my mistake, let's start with Logan's. Okay. They yeah, but 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 when I talk about donations, support based on what you feel, right? If you feel like this is a meritorious lawsuit and your um, you know, your ability you're able to support it, go ahead. But some people they end up pocketing that money or that money ends up going God knows where, you know, sometimes they may end up spending that money on, I don't know, cocaine, who knows, 
right? So you got to be very careful uh, when you donate money to people's lawsuits, right? Or donate money to people's charities. Be very, very, very careful. This lawsuit is not about Logan Paul getting defamed. Instead, this is about him trying to dodge accountability, victims, and blame anyone but himself for his problems, especially me. This lawsuit says Logan Paul wants to hold me accountable for my actions. But what actions are those holding him accountable? It's well, and, and that's so this is one where I am going to give uh, this is a little bit of a in CoffeeZilla's against CoffeeZilla. This is one of the points against CoffeeZilla. So CoffeeZilla is like, well, what is he going to hold me accountable for holding him accountable? Well, pause there. You can't just use the defense of I'm holding somebody accountable. It's got to be truthful. Now, in CoffeeZilla's case, I do believe that what CoffeeZilla uncovered and what he talked about was truthful. And truth, as we're going to talk about many, many times in this, is an absolute defense in defamation cases. However, you can't just say I'm holding them accountable and call them something they're not. So, for example, if you accuse them of having an STD or having committed a crime that they haven't, the most common one that people throw around on the internet is throwing the PDF thing, right? And they're not convicted of that, right? You're probably going to be in some trouble, right? If you accuse someone of being a burglar or a murderer, right, that would be a problem if they are not convicted of those crimes, if they're not facing those crimes. So, you do need to, in your in your quest for accountability, you do need to have a deference to the truth. So accountability is fine as long as it is the truth. So that's my little asterisk caveat there for CoffeeZilla. It's ironic because his lawyers claim Logan has learned to believe in the importance of accountability. But accountability for who? Currently, Logan is fighting the victims of CryptoZoo in court, and now he's fighting the journalist who exposed him in the first place. Personally, I believe Logan has learned nothing from this except how to silence people with the law. But I won't be silenced. Which because is, so this language he's using right now, how to silence somebody with the law, you may think this is just CoffeeZilla being cute. He's not being cute. He's using that strategically. CoffeeZilla clearly talked to a lawyer and understood what anti-slap and slap is. A slap lawsuit is a strategic lawsuit against public participation. It's a lawsuit meant to silence people, to silence critics, right? Uh, anti-slap are laws that are set up to prevent that. So this is what he is referencing here. This is a spirit he is channeling when he is using these phrases and terms. People don't use these phrases just willy-nilly. And CoffeeZilla obviously scripts his videos, which there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. There's nothing wrong with having a scripted video. Many contributors do it. So you know that he's using these words thoughtfully. Because Logan's lawsuit makes no sense, we're going to go through it because from the beginning, there's problems. Logan's five lawyers tried to discredit me as a journalist. They paint me as someone who wanted money. They say I had a false and malicious narrative. But you know who doesn't believe that? You know who secretly praises me behind the scenes? This journalist, YouTuber, crypto uncoverer guy named CoffeeZilla, who's incredible, by the way. A very thorough, um, good-hearted, smart <laughs> guy did a deep dive into this project that I attempted to make called CryptoZoo. That's right. It's Logan Paul. He so this isn't a I'll, I'll let coffee speak for a second and then I'll, I'll yeah it's the biggest enemy of logan paul's defamation case who knew because defamation requires actual malice and okay so two things here right we're gonna go back a second right i want to go back a couple seconds here okay so let's hear his statements he makes two statements which are need need some clarification they called crypto zoo that's right it's logan paul he's the biggest enemy of logan paul's defamation case who knew because defamation requires actual malice and a reckless disregard for the truth. So th there's there's two misstatements there. So I want to clarify. Um, first of all, two things. Um, number one, that statement alone is not going to destroy. So Logan Paul saying, I like CoffeeZilla is not going to destroy his defamation case because you can go out and say, wow, I love somebody. And they turn around and say, you're a criminal. 
or you're this, or you're that. Someone can defame you even while you talk good about them. So defamation doesn't bear on your opinion of the other person. Somebody can be defamatory even if you say something nice about them. Stop. If crypto zoo is in there, coffee zilla is in there, I'm not going to promote it. Yeah. Remove that crypto zoo stuff, that coffee zilla stuff. Doesn't look good when you compliment the guy you're trying to sue. Maybe that's why Logan isn't even suing me for my original investigation at all. Despite most of this lawsuit being a ridiculous fanfic about how I took Logan out of context, that Logan was a victim, that I withheld text messages. Logan isn't suing me for any of the original investigation, though, because he knows he can't. Instead, at the end of the lawsuit, we find what my defamation really is. I'm being sued for two videos and one tweet where I advocated for refunds. So this, this right here is strategic. So the reason why he's doing this, let me be very clear, is in CoffeeZilla is right partially about this, is because he can't sue for the initial investigation because he didn't know any better, right? How, if you need to prove actual malice, you need to know that somebody knew what they were saying was incorrect. And at the beginning of the investigation of Logan Paul, CoffeeZilla didn't know what was true and what was false. He was just investigating Logan Paul. So trying to sue him in the beginning would be very difficult because he didn't have really much information. He's just going on what's public, what's hearsay, you know, what he's looking into, what he's seeing. But there's some things he didn't know were false. But Logan Paul is saying, I turned over DMs to you. I turned over messages to you. And because you have those messages and because you know, based on information I gave you, what you said is false, now it's defamatory because you, these last tweets you sent out after I complied with you, after I was working with you, because I sent those out, you knew they were false. That's defamation, right? That's defamation. The problem is, the problem is, is that Logan Paul's entire argument, the argument that he makes in his complaint is that this scam was perpetrated by his business partners and not him. But the problem with Logan's lawsuit, and this is why I believe Logan's lawsuit will fail and CoffeeZilla will prevail in his defense, is because you are responsible for the actions of your business partner. And if you say it's his scam, it's his business, he owns equity in that business. He was assigned on to CryptoZip. And because of that, because of that, that ownership interest, there's nothing inaccurate about saying his scam because it was indeed a scam. In fact, Logan Paul, in his own complaint, acknowledges that it was indeed a scam. So this is the fundamental flaw of the Logan Paul lawsuit um, here. But just making sure this is, this is very, very, uh, very clear. For the victims. Yes, you heard me right. Logan Paul sued me after I tried to get his fans, the crypto zoo investors, a full refund. Remember, there are two parts to CryptoZoo, the NFTs and the zoo tokens, and Logan chose only to refund the NFTs, which is a minority of the losses, and I had a major problem with that. I told Logan this, I've stated over and over my opinion, that it is disappointing for someone as rich as Logan to not make things fully right, and instead only pay back a small part of the losses while fighting the rest of the victims in court. And it's those videos and tweet where I ask for refunds, which I'm being sued for. The first video in question is about Logan Paul not paying paying out refunds for six months. The second video was about Logan's partial refund, having a clause to make sure you couldn't sue him for the rest of your refund. And the tweet, I simply said, Logan's the type of guy posing a scam and block you when you remind him to pay up. I mean, yeah, now he's the type of guy to then sue you. Now I'm sure Logan doesn't like it when I say things like Logan's victims or Logan's scam, but I have a question. If they're not Logan's victims, whose victims are they? Even Logan admits they are victims. He told me via text, just thought we had the same goal of helping victims instead of a divisive social media war. So he agrees people have been wronged by his game. You know, the thing that he said will earn you money. It's a really fun game that makes you money. So how are these not Logan's victims? He, of course, would say it's his business partner's fault. But remember, Jake and Eddie have been out of the picture for years. And yet, CryptoZoo hasn't been released, despite Logan constantly promising it and, of course, also threatening to sue me. 
We're going to handle this ourselves while we continue to build CryptoZoo, and I'll see you in court. By the time this comes out, it'll be done. The game's going to be made. You're going to have the opportunity to get your money back if you want, if you don't want to play the game. And I'm going to take care of the people who maybe look like it, it, this was a scam perpetrated by me. Right. Logan wants to sue me and release a finished CryptoZoo game, but he's only done one of those. Since Logan... Yeah, so here's a big mistake. Don't promise you're going to release something and then don't release it. That, that's, a, that's a big one. That's a big one. Um, also, really quick, this is something from earlier in the chat I mentioned. This is a federal case. It's in federal court. But understand, guys, in terms of procedural law, right, state procedural law can be used in federal court. There's a very, very famous uh, doctrine called the, the Erie Doctrine, which goes into this analysis of when uh, when state and federal law is applied in um, federal cases. But yes, oftentimes state procedural law is applied even during um, cases, as well as state substantive law. So that being said, a case can be a federal case and it can be a federal judge that is using a state law analysis. So that's very important. Uh, context uh, for this case. Can't blame his partners, Jake and Eddie, for this because they've been out of the picture. You think he'll take accountability for not launching CryptoZoo? No. This time, he blames the government. He says releasing CryptoZoo has too many regulatory hurdles. Maybe they should have thought of that before multi-millions of dollars of zoo tokens and eggs were sold. And now Logan would rather blame the government than take accountability. Or if you let him keep talking, Logan might rant about internet reporters having too much responsibility. These internet journalists, internet investigative reporters have way too much responsibility on their hands that is being mismanaged and wielded in a really inappropriate way. <laughs> Subtitles private jet engine oh god it's honestly funny to watch this guy whine about his problems which you can barely hear over what sounds like a private jet which brings me to another problem logan has part of any defamation case is damages and proving someone has harmed your reputation but isn't logan richer than ever with prime and did he have a reputation to harm his lawsuit shows comments calling Logan a scammer, possibly to suggest he's been hurt by my videos, but you have to have a reputation to lose one. And by the time of my reporting in question, Logan Paul was already accused of participating in multiple crypto pump and dump schemes. That article does not reference my work. So Logan had already had a reputation as a scammer before my investigation, at least if you believe their allegation. Well, and even further, we're gonna see right here, He's facing other lawsuits. Like, this is not the only lawsuit that he's facing. Logan Paul has got a large amount of legal trouble. I mean, Logan Paul is up there with, like, Disney in a number of lawsuits against him. Uh, he's He's got a significant amount of scrutiny against him right now. So Logan is no stranger to lawsuits. And this is where I have to get to my one embarrassing mistake in all of this. See... My defense against rich people like Logan Paul is media insurance, you know, for frivolous lawsuits. So when I was sued, I immediately called my insurance company to file a claim so I wouldn't have to pay for it. But they told me they're not going to pay. They're trying to get out of covering us using lawyers in fine print. It's this is, this happens, uh, this does happen. Guys, insurance companies will try to fuck you and they'll try to say, you know what? We don't cover that. You know what? That wasn't there. And I told you guys, remember, uh, we talked about this when this came down, when the complaint dropped. And you guys in the chat were like, oh, he has insurance. He says he has insurance. And then it turns out, rut row, the insurance doesn't want to pay. Uh, I'm not surprised about that. I'm not surprised about that at all. Oftentimes and many times, it's, it's uh, more efficient to self-insure, which is just understand what the risk is and save money in proportion to that risk. Right? But let's listen to him here. It's a long story that I will be explaining on my second channel because insurance underwriting is very boring. But suffice to say, I got Dylan Danist. I may have even gotten scammed. I'm not quite sure. For now, the bottom line is <laughs> he got scammed. Whoa, buddy, Coffeezilla. But you know what? I do appreciate this about him. At least he's being honest about it. At least he's not trying to present that he's some badass. Like Coffeezilla, the guy who, uh, the guy who investigates scams got scammed. Yeah, like, isn't that a little bit ironic? 
like a little bit, like a tiny bit, right? But it can happen, right? I mean, lawyers make mistakes on the law, right? And invest <laughs> scam investigators get scammed, right? Uh, <laughs> these things happen. They do happen. Um, Why did Logan Paul sue me now? It's been over a year since he apologized and thanked me. Thank you, CoffeeZilla. I am very grateful for your work and your investigation. And I mean that. Thank you, bro. It might seem strange, but I've got some fun Thanks, facts for bro. you that may or may not be related. Well, and we talked about how this lawsuit, a lot of it seems to be coming from the fact that Logan Paul is salty that he feels backstabbed by CoffeeZilla. He thought that if he just talked to him, if he just cooperated with him, that he was going to kind of back off and, and drop it and drop the topic. But as a content creator, that's not going to happen. I mean, oftentimes there's very little incentive to quote unquote work with another content creator because that is, you know, being negative to you or an anti or whatever else, because they're just going to continue to cover it. And they're just going to use that evidence against you, right? There's nothing requiring them to do X, Y, or Z with it, right? They're not the police. They're not law enforcement. They're a content creator. So your expectations about what they're going to do with the information are often misguided. So I would say if you're ever in that situation, particularly as a content creator, I don't think there's much incentive to collaborate uh, with that person. Did you know six days before the lawsuit, I had featured Logan Paul in a teaser for a video? Did you know 21 hours before the lawsuit, I had texted Logan for comment? Did you know I told him he had 24 hours to respond and Logan sued me three hours before the deadline? That's, th th I'm sure that is not coincidental. Yep. That's right. Logan's lawyers then threatened me in that lawsuit email that if I report on this new story, Logan might hold me accountable. And Logan's definition of accountability seems to mean he'll sue me, which is why I believe this lawsuit was not designed to win, but to shut me up, to threaten me, using Logan's wealth and a federal court system without anti-slap to send a message. Do not tell that story. Of course, I don't believe that's the only reason I was sued. Clearly, Logan wanted to sue me for a while, but I believe this new investigation played a role in pulling the trigger. Maybe Logan's team will deny this. Maybe they'll say it's coincidence they sued three hours before a deadline. Maybe it's coincidence I announced a story about Logan six days before, and maybe it's coincidence that Logan's lawyers threatened me about this new story. Let me be clear. Also, sorry, he mentioned the anti-slap. Let me be clear about this. So let me explain something legally. There is no federal anti-slap statute. It does not yet exist. Congress has not adapted it. So in the federal procedure, there's no federal anti-slap. However, because they apply it on a they apply state law on a case-by-case -case basis, they look at each case and say, okay, what do we apply here? They often can apply state anti-slap law. So the federal court in looking at it can say, yep, the anti-slap law applies here. They might also say, no, it doesn't apply here. So he's going into this with a chance to get around anti-slap law, but it's not a guarantee. They can look at it. It's a state-by-state, case-by-case basis, right, when they look at anti-slap law. So just understand that uh, very clearly. Story while suing me for the last story that I hadn't discussed in six months, <laughs> but I don't think so. Either way, when someone threatens new reporting in a lawsuit about old reporting, the effect is the same. So what was this new story? Well, it's partly about a Canadian law enforcement investigation, and it's partly about something I told Logan to help him. Yes, believe it or not, I tried to help Logan Paul. To explain, we need to go back to when CryptoZoo first got exposed. Logan said he was going to sue me, but got backlash. So he called me to apologize. He said he was wrong and wanted to make things right. I made it clear refunds are the absolute right move going forward. And to my surprise, he agreed. A hundred percent, man. We're on the same page, but we weren't. Logan now doesn't use the word refund. He calls this a buyback. But at the time, I need you to understand. I thought Logan was going to announce a full refund. So I began trying to help him. And dare I say, I was even nice to the guy. You can see that I tried to offer people who might be able to trace blockchain damages <clears throat> to refund people. And in the same spirit, I made Logan aware of potential problems at a different company he co-owned. 
called Liquid Marketplace. On a platform that I co-founded called Liquid Marketplace, it allows co-ownership of top tier assets. So instead of one person, me owning this card, we as a collective can co-own it together. This was a fractionalized collectible platform where Logan sold things like roughly half of a $5 million Pokemon card. The idea was you could buy tokens that represented partial ownership in rare collectibles. Uh, that video, by the way, got 8 million views. And a lot of people bought into this platform. The problem was I had heard troubling stories about this company. And I was trying to verify if the claims were true. So I had gone to the CEO, Ryan Bahadori, to ask him questions. But he kept dodging meetings. And I don't mean he refused meeting with me. I mean, we would set up meetings and then he did not show up. So I was troubled. And I brought this up to Logan. I figured if he's going to make one company right, make them all right. Otherwise, it might come back to bite him. I mean, can you imagine the disaster if another one of Logan Paul's co-founded companies was discovered to have scammed his fans? Hypothetically, that would be a very bad look. So I'm thinking while he refunds CryptoZoo, Logan can push the CEO to talk with me and I can figure out the truth. Maybe Logan can fix it if there's something wrong. And you can see Logan responds to me. He says, gonna push Ryan to talk to you. Again, appreciate it, man. Now, I don't hear back from Ryan or Logan about this. So after a while, I follow up again. I say, let me know if Ryan plans on talking. A lot of nasty stories still out there about liquid marketplace, embezzlement, etc. And he's dodged meeting me already once. Well, and, and, and to be clear, though, if you're involved in something that is getting investigated by the Canadian government, mm -hmm. you probably should not be talking about it. So uh, it's not really, I, I wouldn't fault him on that. I would just say, I'm not talking. I would just put out a statement to Coffeezilla being like, I'm not talking to you about this, right? Just be clear about it. Don't try to ghost him or whatever else. Just be clear. Like, no, you're not getting an answer on that, right? Or just don't respond to him in the first place at all. Uh, because, yeah, obviously, if you're under investigation by the government, you shouldn't be on the internet. You shouldn't be talking. You shouldn't be addressing it. Uh, certainly not with somebody whose job it is to expose these things is going to put these out for millions of people because now 5 million people have seen this video. The video I'm right, list, listening to right now, Logan Paul sued me. This is fuck out 5 million views. So this is why you got to be very, very careful. And I guarantee you some of the people that are watching this are in the government that are uh, investigating currently Logan Paul, whether it's on CryptoZoo or whether it's on um, the other issues uh, in Canada. Now, obviously, the most shocking part of this is the word embezzlement. I need to make it clear. This is not an accusation. I am not accusing Logan Paul or Liquid Marketplace of wrongdoing. I brought it up in our texts because it is my job to investigate See? unverified See? claims. See? It's That's job. the whole point of me wanting to meet with the CEO. But I was stonewalled. Logan never replied, despite me reminding him again via email five months later that he wanted to talk to Ryan about, quote, embezzlement and, quote, potential fraud. Once again, not accusing anyone of wrongdoing. I'm simply doing my job at the time to chase down rumors and unverified claims without concrete. Proof. Yeah, but that, that I will say a little bit of coffee Zillow over here, a little coffee. His job is to confirm that. So what he's saying is he's kind of confirming everything about Logan Paul, which is fine because it appears to be the truth, right? It appears to be the truth that Logan Paul's crypto zoo enterprise was a complete scam. And so that's something that we can say based on the self-confessions of Logan Paul's business enterprise as a whole, which Logan Paul as an individual was a part of, right? With those business partners, the crypto king, you know, and all those scammers that he brought on board as his business partners, right? I would have never talked about any of this, but on June 19th, 2024, things changed because the Ontario Securities Commission revealed a liquid marketplace investigation where they accused liquid marketplace of being a multi-layered fraud. So, okay. Now that the government has said this, CoffeeZilla has complete freedom to cover this because the government is the one who's come out and said he's a fraud. So all you have to say is these are the government accusations and you're completely covered. If, you, if you're just reporting on the government accusations saying the government is accusing this, and that's what CoffeeZilla is saying, then he's covered. Now, if he starts making up other stuff, then it might be a problem. But if he's just covering what is alleged, there's no problem. That's the same that we do on LawTube when we cover people being alleged with crimes.
right? So when we cover lawsuits, we're just covering what's already stated publicly. So there's no defamation because the statement is already made, right? So if somebody gets in trouble, let's say they're accused of possession of 28 grams of cocaine, we can openly say, this person is accused of that. That's not defamatory because it's what's happening. It's factual. It's out there. So just to make clear, this is how coffee is, is just in the clear regarding uh, defamation. Taking in $2.7 million from the sale of these fractionalized collectibles. The platform allegedly did not do exactly what it promised. Some of the blockchain tokens did not even mint. But even worse was the allegation that approximately $3 million was misappropriated from $10 million they raised of investor funds. This is a very similar claim to the one I had tried to verify. Ryan Bahadori, the guy I tried to speak to, was accused of, quote, making hidden payments to shell corporations without any legitimate business purpose, as were two other of the founders. And Ryan was accused of, quote, using company credit cards to buy high-end fashion, expensive jewelry and watches, this, this, health and of, this often happens because people are trying to use their corporations to underwrite their lifestyles. Most wealthy people, and, and, and to a certain extent, smart people, uh, will you try to get as much as possible of personal expenses as a company expense. And you know what? A lot of things can be company expenses if you have a certain type of business. But when you have watches, jewelry, and spa services, those things start to get a little weird. Now, fashion can be, right? You're buying suits, you're buying clothes, you need those for part of your job, whatever, right? Maybe that could fly. But a lot of this stuff is going to come under question uh, when, it's, uh, when it's scrutinized, right? Spa services. If only there was someone who could have investigated this sooner. Now, it is really important to say Logan Paul is not accused by the OSC. Only three of his co-founders and his company is. But given the history, I had questions. After all, Logan's promotional video about Liquid Marketplace is still up. And the reason many people cared about Liquid Marketplace at all was arguably Logan Paul. So here were my questions. And as I read this, it's important to correct. I say Liquid Marketplace got accused of embezzlement. Technically, the OSC alleged misappropriation of funds. Those are similar. They're not the same. So I wanted to correct that. But See, that that's actually, so I, I want to say big respect for CoffeeZilla there. This is very important. And I, I really appreciate transparency and honesty. So very good correction there. Very important because these are distinct claims. And oftentimes countries can have different claims. Obviously, coffee is American, right? This is a Canadian thing. So the Canucks can want to bring it under one thing instead of another thing. That often happens, right? So fair play there. That can even happen between states, right? There can be a law in Florida that doesn't echo in Texas or doesn't echo in California. It's a different type of law or the law reads a different way, which is why we're all barred in different states because states can have wildly different law. So big up on there for the correction. I think corrections are important and you know they lead to your authenticity when you can admit that you, hey, you're sometimes wrong and you need to clarify things or maybe you make a statement that needs additional information. But here's what I asked. Quote, did you take any action on hearing these allegations over a year ago? Did you get approached by the Ontario Securities Commission? And is it true that Liquid Marketplace lied about their claims of insurance, appraisals, and co-ownership as the Ontario Securities Commission alleges? You can see I gave him 24 hours to respond on June 26th at 2.03 p.m. And I was promptly sued June 27th at 11.28 a.m. with roughly three hours to spare. Now, I want to be clear. I don't know the answers to the questions I sent. Maybe Logan secretly whistle blew to the OSC when I first went to him. I don't know. That's why you ask questions as a reporter. But now the story is not about those questions. It's about why I was sued immediately after asking them and threatened if I reported about Liquid Marketplace in a way they didn't like. This is not how I wanted this story to come out because there's still so much we don't know and so much I can't say now for legal reasons. Maybe Logan's totally innocent. Maybe he surrounded himself with scumbags who defrauded his fans. Maybe he'll do a refund for this project. I don't know because I never got the chance to find out. I tried to investigate, but I was stonewalled and sued when I asked questions. Make no mistake though, this investigation is still ongoing. And you can reach me at the email below if you were affected. I will release my full investigation when it's appropriate because even if Logan doesn't want to answer questions, it doesn't mean I have to stop asking them.
So in summary, Logan's lawsuit is not about my original reporting into CryptoZoo. Even if you take this lawsuit on its own without context, it's an argument over Logan not refunding victims in full. It's Logan insisting he's not to blame. It's all his business partner's fault. But I don't think that aligns with the publicly known facts. That's my opinion. For years, Logan has controlled CryptoZoo, and yet the game is still not out. Logan is now blaming the government for that. And the control is the problem. This is where he's screwed because he controls it. If he did not control that, if he wasn't in charge of, the, of CryptoZoo, then there might be a problem. If Logan Paul was just somebody who's like an affiliate marketer. So for example, if Logan Paul was just somebody who put a link in his bio saying, oh, here, buy CryptoZoo, you probably could not, could not go to the same depths as CoffeeZilla went. You probably couldn't put him on him that hard instead of himself. And he also blames me for losing his good reputation, but you can't lose something you never had. Not to mention, Logan is arguably richer than ever, and he's on the record finding my reporting thorough and good-hearted. So this defamation lawsuit feels frivolous even on the surface. But if you dig deeper, there's an even more compelling story, which I personally believe where the goal is to crush new investigations while taking revenge on old ones. In this version, Logan might not even care about winning. Legal battles are expensive. And in the world of money, he's got me beat. So he can try to silence me by weaponizing the law. He can sue me for doing my job. He can sue me for asking questions and he can sue me for asking for refunds. But it's going to backfire because I think it reveals Logan as a bully rather than someone who's truly sorry. Because Logan may be a master at convincing people he's changed, but I'm convinced it's the follow through where things go wrong. You know, the actually changing part. There was a time where even I believed Logan was going to fully refund victims. That's why I was so nice to him and tried to help despite him threatening to sue me. But when it came time to pay up, Logan chose a minority refund and to fight the rest of the victims in court who wanted their money. And when I complained about that, Logan went from sorries and thank yous to lawyers and I'm suing you real quick. The irony is it was that same initial belief in Logan's capacity to change that also made me bring up Liquid Marketplace to help stop potential problems. And yet here we are. So, so uh, I mean, look, this is up to you guys. Be your own judge as to whether or not you believe him here, right? Because on on the dark, on the light side, you could believe that CoffeeZilla is genuinely trying to help people and genuinely wanted to help Logan Paul, right? You can believe that. But on the dark side, you can believe that, look, covering a major content creator as another YouTube content creator is one of the best ways to get engagement, to drive your videos, to get payouts on, on YouTube, right? If you're covering somebody who's another big content creator, it's just it's just a meal ticket, right? It's a, it's a check printer that goes burr and prints magical internet money because it's going to get tons of views. So you can view it as he genuinely wanted to help him or he was interested in the money or maybe a little bit of both. Maybe it's a gray area, right? Where he wanted to help him, but also saw it as lucrative, right? That's for you guys to decide what CoffeeZilla's intentions are. I'm not trying to imply that either way. You guys make up your own mind. The company is now accused of being a multi-layered fraud by the OSC. And the CEO, who I tried to talk to multiple times, is alleged to have misappropriated money. This is despite me trying to talk to Logan directly many times as he asked. Maybe we could have talked about this if you had reached out to me personally, not my manager, Jeff, who is not me, me, Stephen. Well, I did try to reach out personally. He first named him. You know he's salty because he first named him. He's like, Stephen. And I got sued and threatened a day later. That, I think, says a lot about Logan's supposed change and his belief in accountability. Maybe the person he really believes in accountability for is not himself, but me, specifically when I try to get accountability from him. If you want to support this lawsuit, the best way is coffeezilla.store. You have 14 days. Or you can support... Cool. So if you can go support him if you want. So that's, uh, that's Coffeezilla's defense there. I think he captured the main legal points that I wanted to get, which is obviously this is the actual malice standard, but that's because they're both public figures, right? Uh, this is a federal lawsuit. There's some state law that can apply, but obviously he's trying to move it in a federal court to gain some advantages uh, and uh, lawsuits are costly. To complement with that, we do have a um, a document that went along with that. So uh, along with CoffeeZilla's video, there was a legal filing. There was a court response. This is the actual response of CoffeeZilla. 
So this is in the district court, United States District Court, that's federal court for the Western District of Texas, the San Antonio Division. So obviously we're with a Texas judge. So is it possible the Texas judge is going to apply Texas law? Quite, quite. Even though they're in federal court, it's possible. It's possible, guys. Um, let's see here. So most of these allegations, so what they do is they look at the complaint. And if you remember, just as a little refresher, guys, because I want to make sure everybody understands, the complaint is what we went through before, uh, and it's right here, which is the complaint itself, Logan Paul versus CoffeeZilla. You can see this here. And it contains the allegations, the facts, the nature of the actions, and allegations. And it contains several allegations at the end, right, and claims for relief. So the response is going through all of these lines, all these claims, and either affirming them or denying them. So saying we either agree that these things are true or we deny. So obviously in this legal document, we have denials. His attorney who's filing um, for CoffeeZilla, Stephen Feinstein, uh, through their attorney, Farrer and Ball, is denying making any false defamatory statement, denying making any false and defamatory implication, denying acting with negligence or actual malice. This is the standard, but they're also saying we didn't commit negligence and denying that there's any damages. So they're denying everything, denying everything. The only things they're, they're agreeing to are some very, very, very basic facts, but they're denying most of the allegations, uh, most of uh, what is said, except for very basic stuff like the parties they're admitting to the party so they're saying oh yeah the parties live in texas the parties live in puerto rico that's pretty much all they're agreeing to everything else is full of shit right uh, also i love this burn look at this burn so it, this is normally a very boring document where all you see is deny, deny, deny. But I caught this one very interesting tidbit. And this is very spicy uh, from the lawyer for uh, CoffeeZilla. So here under jurisdiction says defendants deny the allegation in paragraph 17 of the complaint that the amount in controversy exceeds 7,500 as plaintiff has a global reputation as a serial liar, tasteless exploiter, and untrustworthy entrepreneur, and he is incapable of sustaining more than 75000 in damage to his already sullied reputation. So this is what Uncivil Law was saying earlier. Uncivil Law came in and said, are they arguing he's defamation proof? They're literally arguing that Logan Paul is such a piece of shit that he is so bad he is such a fucking scumbag that Logan Paul is so much of a piece of shit that everybody knows he's a piece of shit and it's impossible to damage the reputation of a known piece of shit. Bro, that, that's great. That was super based. That was old. Oh, that was, that was really great. That was fucking facts. Good job on the lawyer there. Defendants deny that plaintiff is capable of being damaged from allegations of unfair and improper business dealings as plaintiff is already infamous for various business ventures which have been widely characterized as unfair and improper. Bro, he is wrecked. This is how you legally fuck somebody, right? Legally. Legally. And you know how else he's fucked, guys? So aside from that sick burn, you've got this dropping just recently. Logan Paul and KSI Prime are being sued for $68 million for breach of contract for bottling Prime. So they're bottling operations they're being sued for. And, and that's on top of four days ago, you have another another lawsuit involving the Olympic Committee and violation of trademark. Another lawsuit. Because they use the words Olympic and Team USA. And they were using that to gain traction and capture the attention of a younger audience. The fucking Olympic Committee is suing Logan Paul. 
I mean, I can't. This guy is getting spit roasted by lawsuits right now. So Logan Paul is, is, you know, look, I'm eating good. If I'm just covering Logan Paul, I am eating good. Now, obviously on this channel, I don't just cover cover Logan Paul. I cover a lot of topics. In fact, Logan Paul, despite being a big name, whatever, this is actually not my most uh, you know popular topic. I, in fact, covering stuff like Disney or VTubing, you know, is, is typically what uh, what might get me some more traction here. But that said, this is pretty spicy, guys. This is pretty spicy. So Logan Paul is looking very bad. So where do I see this going? I see Logan Paul as either as part of a motion to dismiss, or an anti-slap if they decide to apply that anti-slap law getting absolutely blown out and if they can't let's say they don't have anti-slap let's just pretend that they say okay federal court we're gonna not gonna apply anti-slap okay well apply a motion to dismiss which is in every single federal case i think you've got a damn good point for losing on motion to dismiss i think logan paul can lose a motion to dismiss if it gets a discovery, that'll be a real pain for CoffeeZilla. That'll be a real cost. Now, do I think he would win in summary judgment? Absolutely. But that would be a very costly adventure to get to summary judgment. I have to fight the way through the discovery process and get to summary judgment. So this is why uh, I, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty much in the camp here of legally CoffeeZilla prevailing, right? Regardless of how you feel about him or whatever else. Legally this thing is in the camp of Kavzilla. This is an actual dog shit lawsuit. Logan's looking bad. And it's it, this response by coffee was mostly on point with a few caveats that needed to be expanded upon uh, from somebody who might or might not be a lawyer.